Hey guys, so I'm Candace. Um, this is my first update vlog thing. Um, I'm sick right now. <coughs> <laughs> How cliche. I fucking cough when I said I'm sick. Um, I'm sick right now, so if my voice sounds all muffled or awkward, it's not my fault. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to start by, like, telling my story kind of a thing. Most of you already know it, um, but in the event that you don't, um, here it is. I have something called stage 4 synovial sarcoma, and it's a very rare cancer. Not too many people have heard of it, if any. <laughs> um... It's it's a cancer of the soft tissues and the muscles. Um, there's other forms of sarcoma, but this is just my subtype. I I was diagnosed November eighth of two thousand twelve. Um, prior to that diagnosis, I had seen three doctors. I seen three doctors who all told me that I was crazy, and. They didn't use the term crazy, but they looked at me like I was crazy, which I was not. Was not. Um, I had to finally demand a CT scan because I felt something. I don't care if they didn't feel anything, but I felt something. And after having three doctors tell you they didn't feel anything and that you were crazy, um, it's a little defeating. I'm not going to lie, it's a little defeating. Um, so, I had my, I was going to have a CT scan. I I was all ready. The day before that, though, um, I noticed my leg was really swollen on my left thigh. Or my, my left leg. My left leg where the lump was at the groin. And, awkward place to have a lump. Um... I called my doctor, and she was like, you know, you should go to urgent care, or the ER, because it could be a DVT, and I was like, it's a DVT, like, I know that's maybe seemed like a stupid question to anybody who's dealt with anything medically, really, but I, I haven't been in the hospital too much, and I haven't dealt with a lot of medical problems, so I didn't know. And she's like, that's, um, it's a blood clot. It could be a blood clot. And I was like, okay. So I went, and sure enough, I had a blood clot. And, um, I, I was like, um, is there any way that you guys can do a scan over my pelvis? Because I feel like something is there. And the guy was like, yeah, like, um, we'll get that ordered. And so they did, and they found something, like I said they would. Um, so, <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> um, they, they wanted to do a needle biopsy and a surgical biopsy. So, the needle biopsy, I don't care what they say. They did not numb that. Maybe they numbed the outside, the surface or something, but it still went in, and it hurts so much, and I know pain by now, and that was probably one of the worst, was the needle biopsy. Not even the aftershock of when I had the surgical biopsy, which was painful and left a pretty little scar. No, it was nothing compared to that. Um, I was awake, and they stuck this needle in multiple times trying to get a sample out, and awful. So I had that. They came back to my room and they were like, we think you have something called lymphoma. And I was like, that's cancer. Um, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, we're, we're not 100% sure it's lymphoma, but you have cancer. And I was like, okay. I'm like, all right. He's like, we're going to send the sample off to USC. <clears throat> and, um, we'll let you know. 
Um, the only thing we would have to worry about is if it was sarcoma. Now, sarcoma would be a little harder to deal with, he said. He said, um, there's no regimen for sarcoma. It's so rare. There's nothing that they found that works, per se. Chemo, chemo, radiation, and surgery are the three things that a doctor is told that treats cancer. And every so often, they'll find a drug that works specifically for one cancer. And they hadn't really found one for sarcoma. That is a sure way of treating it. Um, so I was like, okay. Well, if you haven't guessed, I have sarcoma. Yay! Um, it's really hard to find a specialist that even knows about sarcoma. Like, my oncologist at the time didn't know what it was. He had no idea. He'd never seen a case of it. He'd never dealt with a patient who had it. I was a case study, pretty much, and he was tracking my every move, everything I did. He wanted to know more about it, and um, I was fine with that, but there was also that thing that told me he doesn't know what he's doing. He's never seen it, so I sought out a specialist who um, dealt with sarcoma, and um, recently my specialist moved to New York, which all the good sarcoma specialists are in New York, and it's exhausting. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to fly over there, but if I have to, I will. I would fly out of country to save my life. Um, so there's that. Um, I, I had agreed to doing treatment. It was happening so fast, and I know people... <sighs> I know people are like, you know what, cancer is avoidable. You could eat healthier, you could do this and that and every other thing. And you know what, in some respect, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, cancer is avoidable. But I think more some people are more susceptible to it than others. Because there's people who eat crappier than I do. And I don't even eat that crappy. And I don't do crazy amount of things. I don't work with pollution, I don't work with chemicals of any sorts, I am like everybody else around me, and I got cancer, so no, I don't think it's so much avoidable, I could have helped it, maybe, helped it not happen, but maybe my body was just more susceptible to it, um, I had... Hearing the word cancer brought back a lot of memories, like my dad died of liver cancer, and so I kind of associate cancer with death. Now, my mom had cancer as well, but it was an early stage cancer, and um, she had surgery, and she was good, and that was great. Like, I didn't really understand cancer at the time, because I, I thought she was going to die, because hearing cancer makes me think death now. And so I have two different, very different views of cancer. Either you do surgery, you're fine. Or you have cancer, you die two weeks later. And that was probably one of the worst moments of my life, was watching my dad die. And it was really hard. So I was thinking in terms of myself, like, are people going to have to watch me, like, just die? I had never... I'd never even seen someone go through treatment. I didn't know what treatment was. And um, so I did three rounds of chemotherapy in the beginning. I took a bag home. Um, I would have it filled up once a week, and I'd take this chemotherapy bag home. And it had iphosphamide and mesna in it, I believe. It doesn't really matter for anybody that doesn't um, deal with cancer or doesn't know anything about it. It doesn't... Drugs don't matter, but it was iphosphamide for anybody that cares. Um, and I didn't think I really realized I had cancer until... <coughs> until... Probably my second round? Maybe my third. 
I had gone with a friend, and we went to a club, and, um, they check your bag as you go into the club. I know, club, stupid, cancer patient, chemotherapy, why are you going to a club? And yes, I was very stupid back then. I had no, I didn't, I wasn't in the right mindset of where I had cancer. It wasn't a thought in my head, really. I just know I was carrying around this bag that was attached at my arm. I had a pick line here, and I've had a pick line here. No port, but I'm getting one. I was going to get one recently, but I chose not to because I'm not doing treatment just yet, so why have the discomfort of a port? Um... So, I went to this club, and they check your bag as you go in. Now, I had my purse, and I had my chemotherapy bag. Now, my chemotherapy bag looks like a rifle bag. And, um, he was like, he's like, well, what's in that bag? And I was like, it's my chemotherapy. And he's like, you're what? And I was like, it's my chemotherapy. And he's like, okay. Like, I totally could have had a rifle in that bag, and it would have been fine. He didn't even check it, because I said chemotherapy. And, um, he let me in, and at that point, I was like, I have cancer. What am I doing here, first of all? I mean, I didn't ruin the night for anybody else, but what was I doing? So, at that point, I was just like, wow, you have cancer. Like, you're going through treatment. What are you doing around people? You took off work. You took off school to not be around people and you're putting yourself in danger and so I just had to think of all these things I um after the chemotherapy I went and had 25 radiation treatments and um I know some people think that those are harder than chemotherapy but in my case, I don't think, I mean, it was radiation, it, it made my skin really raw, and made me tired some of the time, but I didn't feel too different, um, it caused an indentation in my leg, which, I mean, it's there, I'm not too thrilled about my left leg, um, uh, after my radiation, I had surgery, now, this is where we get to my left leg, um, they did a tumor resection, and they shaved part of my vein. They did a mu muscle flap. Um, now, they tested two of my lymph nodes for cancer, and they came back positive, which I'm glad they checked because I wouldn't have known otherwise. And um, in doing so, they messed up my lymphatic system. Now, I have lymphedema in my left leg, which is the worst part of all of this. It makes my leg really hot, really swollen. It's almost, I don't know, maybe a leg and a half compared to my other leg. Um, but since in surgery they took out a lot of nerves, um, it's numb. So it's painful and numb all at the same time. So my body is so confused on what is going on. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like, I can't feel it, but it hurts. <laughs> I sound crazy, but that's the way it feels. I use a pump twice a day to relieve some of the pressure, but it only lasts for a good five minutes after I take that pump off. So, I mean, if I was to pump it all day, every day, maybe. Maybe I'd have relief. But I can't do that. I have a life, too. Um, I have two compression garments, which um, don't work. I need a new one. But they're expensive. They're $400 a garment. And I don't have $400 just lying around. So, um... I'm saving for that. Having cancer is really expensive, and it's really hard at times to even, like, try to get the funds together for it. And I thank everybody who donated to me at the time of my surgery, because it helped out so much. Like, you have no idea. 
and I still need to send out thank you cards, and I know I've been lagging it, and I'm sorry, my mind's just been elsewhere. I went back to school. I'm back in college. I'm ready to transfer, so I'm excited about that. I had to put my life on holds during this whole cancer journey, and it sucked a lot, and um, I was ahead of everybody, and I was good, I was ready, and then they're like, well, you shouldn't be around people to better your chances, you should just rest, take time off to try to beat this, and I was like, <sighs> like, okay, let's do it, so I did, um, so after surgery, I, I couldn't walk, and that was probably the worst feeling in the world, waking up and not being able to walk. And they gave me a walker, and they're like, well, you're going to have this for now, and you'll have it for a good six months to a year after you get out. And hopefully we can bump you up to crutches. And I was like, wait, hold on. You want me to take home a walker? 21 with a walker. And you know what? To have cancer, to have any kind of medical issue, you have to put aside a lot of modesty and pride. Modesty and pride have no place in a hospital. But I still had a sliver of pride. And no, I was not bringing home a walker. And you know what? Some people, great. If you, if you have no problem with the walker, do it. Because take it slow and steady. I was just not having it. And that's just the way I am. That's the way, that's just the way I am. So, I worked with the walker day and night, and I got up to crutches. I did really fast. And then, I, um, later down the line, I had a cane. And it was all relatively fast. And they were amazed. Like, I had a special physical therapist, and they were just like, how did you, I don't know. So, I just pushed myself, and... Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I should have took a break from surgery and just rested. But I was determined. And my mom, I remember my mom being worried I was going to reverse it or something or break open my incision, which happened once, just once. But um, it was enough. <laughs> um, I had a drain put in after surgery, which I had for a long time. And... Um, at that point, I was just like, this is really gross. A drain is like, a tube was coming out of my leg that was sewn in. And um, it just collected all of the blood, surgical juices. I don't know. I don't want to call it pus because that's gross. But maybe that's what it is. It's probably pus. Um I remember going to the beach with my friends, like, one night, and I still had this drain in from surgery, like, month later, or months, I don't know, I had it forever, and, um, they, we went to the beach, and it was nighttime, it wasn't too cold, it wasn't too hot, it was perfect, and, um, my friends were gonna go in the water, and I was like, yes, I wanna go, and so, as I go in, I remember, um, you have a drain. You have a tube sticking out of your leg that's sewn in. You can't go into the water. Like, what are you thinking? And so I stopped for a second, and it kind of got me down for a little bit, but I was like, you know, it is what it is. So, so there's that. Um, after the surgery, I... Um, they wanted me to do three more rounds of chemotherapy, and I fought it. I was like, why? And they're like, well, just in case there's more cancer. And I was like, but my PET scan's clear. I don't understand. And they're like, well, just in case. And I was like, I'm going to do three more rounds of chemotherapy just in case. My hair had started to grow back, kind of like this, but longer. And I was like, I... I don't know. I kind of don't want to. I kind of want to get back to my life, regular life. So I said no. I said no initially. And um, I thought about it 
day and night I thought about it and I was like, what if I'm wrong? I could be wrong. And if I am, I'll be making the biggest mistake ever and my chances of survival will be nothing. And so I did it. I did three more rounds. I chose, I picked this decision almost like a couple days after I'd said no. So there wasn't any time lost. Um, so I chose to do that. The drugs for that one were adriamycin and iphosphamide. I believe it was adriamycin. Now, adriamycin is one hell of a drug. Like, it's strong as fuck. Uh, oh my god, I'm so sick. I'll probably go to the hospital um, after this video. <laughs> um, adriamycin can do so much harm to your body. Not that, like, any other chemo can't, but adriamycin's one of those drugs that, um, like, heart places look at and, um, cardiologists, sorry, um, everyone looks at that drug. Like, I'm going to a fertility specialist right now because I have de been deemed almost infertile, um, which sucks, and I can't stop thinking about, but I'm working with that right now, it's just, it's taking a little bit to get the ball rolling on that one, um, yeah, so there's that, so I did those three rounds of chemotherapy, um, My hair fell out probably within the first two seconds I took it. <laughs> um, so after that, near my birthday, they were like, you're cancer free. Like, yay. And I was like, yes, I'm in remission. I had my birthday. Um, I had a birthday party and my friends were just all happy for me, excited. I was excited and I was going to go all out. I got drunk. It was fun. Um... And recently, a friend sent me videos from that night, like, of all my friends saying, I love you, so glad you're cancer-free, and it was incredible, and, I mean, it got me a little down watching it recently, but I like to remember the good times, I guess, and, um, maybe a little bit before Christmas, maybe two days before Christmas, I got a phone call, and, um, they were like, my doctor called and he was like, can you come in so we can discuss your scans? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I, I'm still in cancer-free mode. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go in. Like, cool, let's discuss it. So I go in and um, he's like, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your cancer has spread and it's throughout your lymphatic system. It's in your lymph nodes and it has spread to your lungs. Now, at the beginning of all this, they said that if it reached my lungs, I couldn't be saved. And I remember those words very vividly now that it has reached my lungs. And um, I've gone to multiple doctors that told me that I'm terminal and that they could buy me time if need be, if that's what I want. Um, I've been called by hospice more than that, stuff I don't disclose to my mother, so she doesn't need any more stress in her life. Um, but, yeah, I was being told you're terminal, really, it's, you don't really know how to feel. You're like, like looking at me and talking to me. I'm very lively, very, I get excited, like overly excited about things. Um, and you would never even know that I have cancer. And so to be told that I'm terminal was kind of like, what? Like I could be fine one day and the next day I'm just like super sick or something. And, um, 
I've seen it happen, so I'm not knocking it that it can't happen. Um, I've had it happen with friends that I've made who have had cancer and they lost their battle where I'd be talking to them one day and the next day they end up in the hospital really sick and like a couple days later they pass and I'm just like how does that happen how does somebody who's so happy so positive just I don't know how do they just pass away like that and it's it's really hard to watch and I kept thinking of all the people that were gonna have to watch that as I declined kind of and that's the only thing I was worried about I wasn't worried so much about death because it doesn't scare me at this point um I don't feel like I'm dying, so I'm not going to act like it. It's just all the people that I would leave behind that would hurt. Um, I've just kind of switched a lot of stuff in my life. Um, I started eating organic, and uh, I started going to church, talking to God. I had put him out of my life for a really long time. And, um, I had thought to myself, like, how could he do this to me? Like, why, why is it that I deserve this? There's people out there who are murderers and terrible people and they're fine. They're healthy. They're doing what they got to do. And I'm just like, how come I don't get that opportunity? How come I don't get the opportunity to just do whatever I want? And, um, I... I had eliminated most of the stress in my life. I broke up with my boyfriend that I've had for the past four years. And um, I kind of had to think to myself, like, I only want people here that want to be here during this struggle who are positive and give off good vibes. I don't want anybody who doesn't want to be here during this. And um, our breakup was very smooth, very mutual. Um, no hard feelings, no, I, I feel good at this point in my life, and, um, I've just switched a lot of stuff, and it kind of sucks, though, because every time I do meet a guy that I could potentially like, I push him away, and it's because I keep thinking, like, I have cancer, like, I mean... How long do I have? Like, why am I gonna put someone through that? Um, and it sucks to have to think like that, you know? So, um, I've just been, I've switched a lot of stuff, and I keep thinking, like, nobody promised me an easy life. Nobody promises us, promises, nobody promises us an easy life, and... We just kind of have to roll with the punches, no matter what you're given. Um, everybody has their own demons, and I'm not saying my problems are any worse than anybody else's. But given the circumstances, like, people get so stressed and so mad over such little things. And I'm not knocking them or anything, but, like... Yeah, school is stressful. I'm not going to lie. School is very stressful. And maybe losing your favorite t-shirt is stressful. Um, I don't know. Just little things. And I think of all those things like, yeah, I wish the only thing that I was stressing about was school. That would be great. But it's not. So, I don't know. You just kind of have to think about what you've been given and how much you take for granted. And to all my people, all my people, <laughs> to all my um, friends and acquaintances that have cancer, um, I just want to let you know how incredible you are. Like, you guys are some of the best people that I've ever met in my entire life. And I think it's an empathy kind of thing. You guys empathize and you're so grateful for everything. And granted, I have met some cancer patients who are less than grateful. And they're whining about, poor me, why me, why me this, why me that. And some people use it for pub publicity. And 
I think the goal in all this is to want to be here. How badly do you want to be alive? How badly do you want to be here for yourself, for your family, for your friends? And how badly do you want to fight for your life? If you don't want to fight that badly, that's on you. Um, I think if you're given the opportunity to fight for your life, you should do so. And in doing so, have the time of your life. Go places, travel, um, do everything in the event that, you know, you don't make it. But I think by giving up, you've already lost. You're... When you were diagnosed with cancer, you were deemed a survivor. And you're kind of knocking it. But I can't... I mean, I can't change the way anybody feels. So, this is just the way I feel. Um, I like the idea of inspiring people to just want to live, want to have life. Because ultimately, that's why we're here. We're here to have the time of our lives, right? So why not do it? And if it took cancer to get me to realize everything in my life that I should be doing, then so be it. I've been told I'm terminal more times than not. I've been called by hospice. I've been told that they want to make me comfortable. And do I look like I'm dying? No. So why am I going to act like it? There's no point. I have stage 4 cancer. And here I am. This is me. Anyways, I just want to say thank you everybody for your support. For... All my friends, my family, acquaintances, people I don't even know. Um, thank you so much for your prayers, for your love, your honesty, and just everything. You guys are incredible. Thank you for watching. I'll provide contact information down below. And you can feel free to ask me any questions that you want. Um, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Um, anyways, enjoy this beautiful day, whether you be in another state, another country, California today is on its A game, and I'm gonna enjoy my day, so, um, thank you for watching, I love you guys, I'll update you as things come along, yeah, okay, bye.